Live from the Piazza at Quinnipiac University, it's Late Night with Kevin Carroll. Featuring guest host Tom Valerio, with special guest Alice Holland. I'm Matt Solomon, and here's Tommy. <laughs> Everyone, thank you for being here tonight. Unfortunately, Kevin couldn't make it tonight. He is at Sochi representing the Team USA uh, curling team. Uh, so best of luck, Kevin. Uh, he'll be back in two weeks. So Matt, everyone give a round of applause for Matt Solomon. <laughs> Matt, that was a, a great introduction. Thank you, Tom. That was phenomenal. You're going to give me a run for my money. Oh, I hope not. Tom. I hope not either. I really like. Yeah, you just got your stay. I mean, yeah. Know? I mean, I'm, it's you, you can't you can't get rid lost of me. Lost Leno, lost Carol. Let's not lose you two. I'm not leaving. Oh, good. That's good. that way it is. So we got a lot of news. Yeah, usually. A lot of news. Always a lot of news. So uh, let's get to it. As we all know, the Super Bowl was this past weekend. The Seattle Seahawks defeated the Denver Broncos by a score of 43 to 8, making it the third largest loss in Super Bowl history, or what NFL historians are calling. A Peyton Manning forehead-sized loss. <laughs> That's some highbrow comedy you got there, Tom. Uh, See, I can do this crap yeah, too. High, highbrow, <laughs> highbrow forehead. You yeah, know, sir. you know. At late night, we like to think, you know, big forehead, big show. That was the the logic going on when we when we had that joke. But so, <laughs> oh, only the the brightest minds oh, can work at uh, at late night. Uh, Justin Bieber's in the news again. He was arrested last week after being pulled over by police in Miami, Florida. He was charged with drag racing, a DUI, and he was also ticketed for not having his booster seat strapped in properly. <laughs> See, booster seat isn't even safe to have in the front. Now, you shouldn't put baby in the corner or the front. Middle is a good spot. That is, that, is a, that is a little nugget from Patrick Swayze <laughs> that we will never forget. No. But, I mean, come on. <laughs> buckle in, Justin. Yeah, like, come on. come on. Who are you trying to Stay impress? Stay safe. I mean, you buckle in. You harness it. I've, I've actually never used a booster seat. I don't know what I'm talking about. That explains so. a lot. <laughs> A tin of marbles that allegedly belonged to Anne Frank has been found in Denmark. I guess Hitler wasn't the only one who lost his marbles in the Holocaust. <laughs> oh. 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 I apologize. Oh, I, don't, yeah. I, don't feel good about, I don't feel good about that one. Now, they, they actually I'm share something kidding. else in common, Tom. What is that, Matt? They both lack a pair of testicles. <laughs> no, no, this is a true story. Hitler actually only had one ball. Anne Frank, I don't think, had any. But, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. Look it up. Uh, I, I sure will, Matt. I yeah. mean, this is just... This is going off track. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, we start we started off strong yeah, with the fault, yeah. we started off strong with the forehead uh, joke, and then it's just it's just a nosedive right now. Um, speaking of derailing, a train carrying toxic materials derailed in Mississippi, spilling its contents into a local trailer park. Normally, there would be concern over the waste causing mutations, but officials realized that ten decades of inbreeding beat them to it. <laughs> Nothing there, Matt? No, I got no, nothing. Nothing? You're oh. usually quick with a witty comeback. I'm still hurting from the Anne Frank joke, Tom. All right. <laughs> uh, that's fair. That's fair. In Montana, a 78-year-old man was arrested and charged with prostitution. The police were called to the scene when a frisky patron triggered the man's life alert necklace. <laughs> <laughs> I've fallen, but I can still get it up. Hey, <laughs> 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 yeah. Tommy! I, I think that was a good old man impression. Oh, yeah. You may I, sound like that when you get older. I hope so. I mean, I, I hope the same, you know, with the whoop. The, don't, I hope that, don't be the old man. I, I, ho I hope that works as well. So, you know, all, all the best. Fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, the Lego movie's coming out on Friday, guys. Legos. Legos, yeah, exactly. Uh, there's no joke. I'm uh, just giving you guys a heads up. Uh, I mean, all-star cast, oh, yeah, by absolutely. the way. A uh, rare owl was stolen from a bird sanctuary in Washington this week. Investigators have been looking frantically for the 14-year-old owl, but their unsuccessful search has left them wondering, who? <laughs> uh, President Obama announced a pledge of $750 million for student technology. When asked how he might allocate Quinnipiac share, President Leahy said that uni the university plans to spend it all on more wind turbines. Because Bobcat Net's fine, so, you know. Bob <laughs> Bobcat, Bobcat Net Never is crashes. good. I mean, yeah. More wind turbines. Less bobcat yeah, net. Everyone will be happy. Go green, go bobcats. <laughs> That's the new slogan here in Quinnipiac. <laughs> After taking a wrong turn on a road trip with his wife, a retired military veteran from Kentucky was arrested for accidentally trying to smuggle a loaded gun into Canada. If charged, he could face up to three years in a Canadian prison. When asked about how he felt about the whole situation, the man said, it isn't the idea of being in prison that I hate, it's the idea of having to spend three years in Canada that I hate. <laughs> Now, well, in his defense, he did say it was an accident, eh? <laughs> yeah. uh, I think it's a boot time we move yeah, it's on. A boot time. 
I think it's about time. Uh, the Museum of London has uh, unveiled a set of tiles dating back to the 1700s depicting sexually explicit images of men and women. On a related note, a recent survey has indicated that teenage interest in 18th century England has increased by 10,000%. <laughs> that, is, that is a huge it jump. Is. I may check it out. I might check it out as well. I mean, we got our plane ticket out we'll to the go, museum. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, our favorite social media website, Facebook, turned 10 years old this week. CEO Mark Zuckerberg is urging users to write on their wall and buy them a Starbucks gift card. Ah. <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you ever done that? No, I haven't. I have done my fair share of poking, but no, no buying. Uh, do they even have poking? Is that like a real thing? I'm anymore? sure they hide it somewhere. They're, they're trying to phase it out. Yeah, yeah. There's probably like a hidden screen somewhere for them. Yeah. But. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a great show for you tonight. Alice Holland, the new director of student health services, will be here to share five, her top five intelligent flirting tips for Valentine's Day. So get your pencils, get your pens. I don't think people, do they use that anymore? No, they'll just sext it, it'll be good. No, they'll sext yeah. it and they'll, they'll figure it out by the yeah. time it happens. So. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's, get it, let's get it going. So we're here now. We are here. We're here Doing on the, the stage. Yeah. A lot of snow. Recently. A lot of snow. Yeah, we had some Monday, had some Wednesday. May get some this weekend too. It's what experts are calling multiple snowgasm. Yes, so. and Alice Holland will explain this all later yes. in the show. Yes. So, um, <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, what did you? How did you spend your snow day? Snow day. Watched some movies. Watched some movies. Tried to get some work done. Didn't happen. What'd you watch? What'd you watch? I watched, uh, Star Wars. So I saw Star Lando Wars? Calrissian. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Lando. Lando is uh, always He's a good guy to watch. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I spent it the same way. I tried to watch True Detective, but Bobcat Net, the elusive Bobcat Net. Uh, but I thought it was fine. Though. It failed me. Well, apparently not. Well, not for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> not for me, but I'm for sorry. everyone else. It's fine. Uh, but what uh, did you think of the uh, Super Bowl halftime show? You know what? It beat my expectations. thought there was a little too much Bruno, not enough Red Hot Chili Peppers, but you know, it was better than the actual game. game was abysmal. Yeah, you, uh, you, never, uh, you never have enough Red Hot Chili Peppers. No, no, no. I mean, that's well, my favorite, one of my favorite bands. Yeah. I mean, not enough. They're just too small. Yeah. Uh, but um, we have a segment here uh, with the Chili Peppers. Really? Uh, the, the members of our staff walked around yep. and asked questions and gave people Chili Peppers. So let's check that out. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? All right. Rap originated in what country? Uh, what, Hungary? Yes. <laughs> Uh, holy... <laughs> America? Yeah, that's actually right. Alright, what is Batman's real name? Chocolate. <laughs> 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 Woo! Um, the Heisman Trophy is presented in which sport? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the name of Dr. Seuss is the big catching elephant is one. <laughs> All right. The Wall Street crash took place in what year? 2008. 1929. <laughs> <laughs> the outermost layer of the Earth is called what? The atmosphere. That would be the crust, but <laughs> solid guess. What are those? Habanero what peppers. What does go on? What do you even put that on? It's 26 seconds. <laughs> oh. That was painful. That was, that was pretty cruel. Yeah. Uh, they, none of them got the answers right, I don't think. No, some were close, but no. But With that torture, I don't know if I'm going to come back to it. That was kind of mean. I, I, I don't condone yeah. the actions no. of my members. That wasn't your idea, right? That was not okay. my idea. I can't get, say that. I believe it's you. not I my believe. idea. But uh, going on with the Super Bowl, yeah. what, what the hell was that? I don't know, man. You don't know? I couldn't tell what you. What do you mean no. you don't know? I, I don't know, man. I mean, the, the commercials, disappointing. The game, disappointing. Halftime show, okay, but... But, I mean, that was just... I mean, you'd, you'd think with the top offense, top defense, you know, you'd think you'd get something. Yeah. 
but I mean. And I feel like no matter who you root for, everyone wants to see a good game, and I don't think we got that. No, Even if you were rooting for no, the Seahawks. No, we did not. We did not get a good yeah, game. So. But um, our correspondents, Kevin and Brent, uh, actually went around to Quinnipiac, giving play-by-play -play of ev uh, everyday activities. So let's see what we got going on. Okay. There. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Good afternoon, Bobcats. I'm Gary Kleenex alongside Patsy, the Throw Pillow O'Reilly. That's right, folks. And as you know, we're in the midst of one of the most exciting weekends in all of sports. Right you are, Patsy. And that can only mean one thing for our viewers. Excessive coverage! <laughs> exactly. You know, we would be remiss to deny our fans of the up-to-the-minute reporting of every single solitary event on this campus, no matter how mundane. If someone so much as sneezes, we want you to know about it. And we're taking our viewers deep, deep inside the nostril to go over every single detail. <laughs> Took that metaphor a little too far, Patsy, but I'm all right with it. With that, we take you over to the calf, where I understand we have an interesting on-field situation. That's right, Gary. The problem is a factor now in this key play. Oh, definitely. Our hungry friend Chris over here is having a hard time realizing that the calf is about to close and the Charwell's employees are growing impatient. Well, we all know they have better things to do. Chris is going to have to make a decision here, and fast. You said it, Gary. It's a shame that the calf's obscure hours have been a mystery to everyone since the day it was built. I believe you need a farmer's almanac and an astrolabe to properly calculate them, but that's neither here nor there for Chris. He's got to make up his mind. It's just so tough. I mean, which one of these undercooked meals is the least likely to leave permanent organ damage? <laughs> BYOB. Stutter steps, fakes right, bounces back to the outside, and he's off! That's the salad bar! And he could go all the way to Chef Jet. Poor choice. Oh, I hope he has <laughs> Not to interrupt you, Patsy, but I've just received word that we have a new development happening in an absolutely classic matchup right outside these doors. Let's take it to the quad. <laughs> We're about to witness another chapter in the age-old saga that is seeing your crush on the way to class. Phil has just locked eyes with Julie from Psych 101, and they're 75 yards apart from each other. What's the game plan here, Patsy? Well, talk about a sticky situation here for Phil. It looks like he's resorting to the check my phone and hope she didn't notice. How <laughs> much longer can he keep it up? I mean, it's like she knows the only text he gets are from his mom and the QU alert system. Ooh, when the battery is dead, he knows he shouldn't have played that last game of Flappy Bird. Yup, that's right. He's gonna need to find a diversion. Oh, what's this? It looks like he might know someone across the way. This could be big. Hey, Chris! <laughs> Chris, it's me! <laughs> <laughs> Chris, it's me! <laughs> <laughs> oh, tough break there. That puts him in an even worse position than when he started. Yep, he'll have to be quick on his feet to save this one. I'm... I'm... <laughs> <laughs> All the way with that, any chance of a pity hookup goes flying out the window. We may have just witnessed a career-ending ego injury. That's going to be tough to bounce back from. That's right. And the day might be winding down now, but the action isn't over. We go live now to the shuttle stop where a new story is underway. Geez, Patsy, where did the time go? Beats me, Gary. Well, we're here at the shuttle stop, and things are not looking good. That's right. Our friend Travis over here might not be aware, but he's in a bit of a pickle. I don't think there's much he is aware of after a long night in New Haven. And we're underway. <laughs> so he's definitely done this before. Oop, faltering now with the door. But water recovery. Who says alcohol impairs you? Did you see for the pamphlets? No such luck. Instead, he seizes a mint full of condoms. Oh, he must be feeling optimistic tonight. Hold on, Gary. As he exits, Travis has declared himself the best at everything. I am the best at everything. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the moves to back it up. As far as drunken staggering goes, Travis is at the top of his game. He's at the doorway. It's going to be close. And he's in! Let's take it to our sideline reporter, Trixie Oduya. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Travis, to what do you attribute your success? Well, I'd, I'd like to thank uh, Chumba Wamba for teaching me every time I fall down to just get back up. <laughs> well, you heard it here first, folks. Back to you, Gary. Well, that about wraps things up for me and Patsy here. Too much excitement for one day, if you ask me. I'd say you're right. We now bring you back to Late Night with Tom Valerio? It's got to be a typo, right? I wouldn't say so. That's <laughs> disturbing. It's kind of bush league, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. That could be our cue. Yeah, that could be our cue to leave. Let's, let's head out. Let's, uh... <laughs> Beats me. I don't no. know who that is. But uh, we'll be right back with Alice Hahn, so please stick around.
we'll uh, be right back. The Bobcat Shop, located at 1010 Sherman Avenue in Hamden. Your number one choice for Bobcat merchandise. The Bobcat Shop features two floors of countless styles and colors. With a full 19,000 square foot screen printing and embroidery operation on the premises, Campus Customs and Simplify can design and decorate any garment or promotional product as quickly as needed. Stop in and say hi. All right, everybody, let's welcome our next guest. Uh, she's a sexologist, a nurse practitioner, and she's the new student uh, health service lady. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, her name is Alice Holland, so let's give her a round of applause. Thank you. Thanks. Here. Okay. Hello. Hi, Hi, Alice. How are you Good. today? Hi, everybody. That's great. <laughs> Let's, let's, let's just cut right to the chase, Alice. Okay. <laughs> How did you get into sexology? What, what is sexology right, as well? Right. Okay, so it's the, um, the study of different dimensions of human sexuality. And I kind of fell into it by accident. Um, I was working at a university, and prior to working at a university, I ran a family planning clinic. And then I was working at a university, and they asked if I would teach a human sexuality course because of my background in family planning. And I said I would give it a try. Actually loved it, and you know went on to get my master's in human sexuality, and now my PhD. All right, can you give us some course names? I'm very interested. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I want uh, anything, anything sure. that we can't share on TV. Oh, no, no. I mean, all aspects of human sexuality just encompasses everything. So, no, I think you can um, talk about anything. Uh, a lot of it is atypical sexual behavior. So, for example, um, BDSM, um, that's an acronym for four letters, means six different things. Um, <laughs> that's you, another episode. That that's another, you'll have to have me back. That's, that's, that's but, the, that is the director's cut yes. of this episode. But, you know, a lot of what all of you learn um, you know, maybe K through 12 and, and even higher ed, you know, undergrad is um, cognitive and behavioral, like knowledge and skills. Um, a lot of what I did in, in my um, background in human sexuality is affective learning, which is um, uh, attitudes and beliefs. And not that we want to change our attitudes or beliefs, but just get in touch with what yours are and they may be different from someone else's. So a lot of the courses had to do with that. So then if you're, if you're um, providing therapy for someone and they say something outrageous, like what turns them on, that you're not, where did you get that from? That you can just sit back you know, calmly and say, oh, tell me more. <laughs> That's it's all, it's all very interesting. Yeah. Now, you, you taught at Penn State. Yes. How, how was that? I loved it. Um, I didn't leave Penn State because I didn't like it. It's just a new chapter in my life. I, I um, in really, really enjoy higher ed. I mean, I get to be around a wonderful group of, of students, so give yourselves all a pat on the back because you're, you know, um, you ask your, you know, you're, you're here, you ask a bunch of questions, you want to learn, and, and you're continuing your education. That's just a wonderful thing, and I'm, you know, just proud to be a part of it. That's very, that's very good. <laughs> you are. Um, <laughs> what was the weirdest question you were asked in a classroom? So, and that was by accident, so I was doing, I used to do these kind of um, brown bag seminars where people would bring their lunch and we would have these open discussions just to, so that people would be comfortable talking about different issues in human sexuality. And um, they could talk about anything and I would kind of, um, you know, talk about anatomy and physiology. So anatomy is the structure, right? Physiology is the function. So while anatomy is cool, physiology is even cooler, like how things work sexually. And the topic was anal sex. And we were discussing this in detail, and a girl raised her hand and she said, is this the writing lab? And I said, oh no, it's you know, the And I was really, I was really worried that I was gonna offend her. And the next semester, she was in my class. She signed up for it. So that was <laughs> <laughs> she didn't withdraw or anything. 
from the university, so. Yeah. How many people asked you about that rash on their upper thigh? <laughs> I get that even in the grocery store. <laughs> what kind of people are you meeting in the grocery something? store? Yeah. <laughs> Do they just know? Is this like a known thing? I don't know. I think people sexologist? just, yeah, I think people just, people just, know, people yeah, just yeah, yeah. Two together. gets around. <laughs> <laughs> We'll leave that at that. Okay. So, uh, how important is a hands-on approach in your classroom? <laughs> um, so it depends on what you're doing. And, um, oh, she's a good answer. Anybody cool. out here interested in becoming a sexologist? I am now. <laughs> I'm thinking. Of, I'm thinking about it. You, you need to have good rationale for everything that you do. You know, everything that you're doing in the classroom. So, so that you're you're. You know, so that you're practicing safe and that everybody in the classroom feels comfortable. Well, yeah. that's, that's always very important to feel comfortable in the classroom. Now, um, what is the weirdest superstition you had about, you've heard about sex? Oh, okay, so um, the weirdest superstition. Some of my classes I would end with an experiential approach. And um, one, I took a, um, a group of students to Africa with me. Um, my research has been um, sexual myth-gathering among street-dwelling youth. So we were in Kenya, and we were testing a curriculum that was successful in South Africa, a sexual health curriculum, and we were adapting it to street-dwelling children in Kenya. So um, some of the, the myths that they would gather on the streets and that they thought were true were that um, if, you're, if you have itchy breasts, it means you miss your boyfriend. Um, so I, I don't think that's true. <laughs> um, what's another one? If you jump over the legs of a pregnant woman, the baby will look like you. And the other one that I, that I recall is if you chew cot, which is a, a drug um, in Kenya, if you chew cot, you'll shoot blanks. And I don't recommend that as a method of birth control. So. <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't recommend that either. Right. That's, that's, <laughs> but remind me never to go to Kenya. <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful country. Beautiful. But it shows the, the power and the importance of, of education. You know, that's why we're all so lucky that we're here in college. Yeah. Well, that's all, that's all very great. Thank you very much. We learned a bunch, I think. <laughs> a lot of uh, bizarre things. So that happened, but, uh, Stick around. We have the top five flirting tips you have. Uh, yes, because Valentine's Day is coming up. Valentine's Day is coming up. So yes. I hope you guys figured out what you're going to use, pen, Song, yeah, yeah. tablet, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stick around. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Q Cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney here at Ray and Mike's. <laughs> Welcome back to Late Night. Uh, we have the top five flirting tips, but first, before we start. <laughs> okay. Anyone else need time to? <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's get this. Okay, so I think they, are they putting visuals up? Because I thought maybe the audience could help me and guess what they are. Um, so what would that flirting tip be? Rock hard. <laughs> I think he's onto something. I think he might be, yes. Nice. <laughs> but um, I was actually thinking a quasi-dangerous um, first date. So we're going to talk about um, how you can have a successful Valentine's date with your Valentine, OK? So by, and, and I put this up as kind of a quasi-dangerous experience because you could fall, right, or like hit yourself against that rock hard thing, right? <laughs> but um, anyway, who, do we have bio majors here? Okay, good. <laughs> and how about health science or pre-med? Okay, so you know the neurotransmitter dopamine, right? You heard of that? Okay, and um, the neurotransmitter dopamine, um, 
when, it, it, when that's increased, it increases attraction. And when we do something that's, we won't say dangerous, we'll say quasi-dangerous, it increases our stress hormone. See, this is why physiology is so cool, even in sex. It, it, when we do something quasi-dangerous, it increases our stress hormone, cortisol, right? And it increases epinephrine. And then it also increases dopamine, which increases what? Attraction. So if you, for a first date, if you pick a quasi-dangerous environment or something to do, you know, it's kind of a little bit cheating, but it increases attraction and can make someone like you, right? <laughs> it increases your chances. So I put in rock climbing, maybe um, sledding on these icy hills that we have right now. <laughs> uh, what else? A scary movie, a roller coaster ride. So you want to do something that's quasi-dangerous rather than kind of boring, okay? So think of that, that's your tip number one for successful Valentine's date and intelligent flirting. Oh, okay, uh, that one um, is to develop your conversational muscles, okay? <laughs> that, that's what you thought, right? <laughs> so a lot of times in a relationship, we don't communicate enough, okay? Um, we're all guilty of that. So I like to think of that but all, all communication, but that, that date that you're going on on Valentine's Day with your sweetheart, um, I like to think that you should think of the conversation as a tennis match. Treat it as, as a tennis match, back and forth, back and forth. If it's one-sided where you just stand up and you talk about yourself, um, they don't, people are going to get bored or think that you're, you know, that you're acting um, kind of, what, like rude and, and self-centered. And if you badger someone with a bunch of questions, they don't want to feel like they're interrogated or being interrogated. So you want to go back and forth. You also want to ask open-ended questions. You'll get more of a response. So you don't want to say, um, do you eat Italian food? Instead, you can ask an open-ended question. Tell me about the types of cuisine you enjoy. Right? <laughs> and you'll get a much broader answer. You'll learn more about that person. OK? Make sense? Tennis match, back and forth, open-ended questions. Wow. OK. <laughs> what is that? What does that one mean? Uh, use toys. Use toys. So Matt said use toys. <laughs> um, I it's a good guess. It is a very good guess. Thank yes, you. you're welcome. But that's a, different, that's a different time when I'm a guest also. We'll talk about Okay. okay. <laughs> um, this I put up there to remind me to tell you positive vibes, right? <laughs> okay? Um, that, was, that was the last thing I thought of, <laughs> Because we are wired as humans that if we're not giving out a positive vibe, people assume we're negative. We just do that by default. It kind of stinks. You know, if you're having a bad day, or what if I came down here when they announced me so lovely, thank you, and thank you for the greeting, but what if I came down and I kind of, you know, sat like this and double-crossed my legs and put my head down and didn't smile? What would you think about me? I don't think it's she's, Right, right. <laughs> you would TV. think, gosh, she's negative, she's not friendly, she's not engaging in conversation. Um, same goes for everywhere in your everyday life, positive vibes, because we are wired. And maybe I'm a wonderful, engaging person, but maybe something terrible happened in my life and I just couldn't engage. But we're wired that if, we're, if we don't see you acting positive, we assume you're a negative person. So you need to get out there and act positive. And keep one of these around just in case, too. <laughs> Never know what you might need. In case all these, these things she's talking about yes. doesn't work. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they will. This is just backup. What's the next one? Oh, what do you think that one means? So I want to give you the recipe for an approachable you, right? OK. And that's a Clever. relaxed, open posture, OK? So, you know, when I'm speaking to someone, I'll, like when I'm speaking to Tom, I'll face Tom, Hello. right? Hello, Tom. <laughs> I'll use good eye contact. Um, how am I doing? You're doing wonderful. Really, you are. You are. Um, Kevin might be out of job. I hope so. <laughs> oh. Shots, Shots fired. fired. Shots fired. Oh, my Lord. This is <laughs> so, um, so, relaxed, open posture, good eye contact, and smile. 
right? Smiling increases dopamine, which increases what? Attraction. Attraction. Good. Oh, see, you're all wonderful. Another pat on the back, right, by all of you. So um, that's the recipe for an approachable you. If you get nervous, if you're going out to an event and you get nervous, oh my gosh, I can't relax. I'm going to teach you two quick breathing exercises to calm down, okay? The first one is called seven and seven. It's not the drink, okay? It's, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm the director of health services. I have I was, to all, I was yeah. promised the seven. <laughs> <laughs> what you do, and we'll all do it together. We're going to inhale for seven seconds and exhale for seven seconds. Do, do we do the hand? No, we don't have to do that. <laughs> uh, okay. okay, so here we go. Inhale. Exhale. Now you're ready to face that person, right? <laughs> and if that doesn't work, I have another one. So you're going to um, show me your thumb and your ring finger of your dominant hand. Can you do that? I know that's hard. It'll, you'll lose your nervousness because you're trying to figure this, this out. <laughs> OK. This is a great deep breathing exercise. I do it whenever I'm nervous. I was doing it up there before Tom announced me. Both hands? No, just one. I might need some tape. So it's called <laughs> alternate nostril breathing. What you're going to do is you're going to cover one side of your nostril with your thumb. Breathe in. Now switch, cover this, and open this, and breathe out. We'll practice it one more time, because oh, yeah. I know that's tricky. It's tricky. Feel good? OK? You do those, you'll be fine. I, I don't, <laughs> Like, are these okay to do in public? I feel like that would be like a weird thing. Yeah, to unless do. you're in the car, because people might think you're picking your nose. <laughs> yeah. Or among other things. Then just go with the seven and seven. Okay. <laughs> okay, last one. Oh, what does this one mean? I like Olivia Wilde. Read. So, I love Oscar Wilde saying, um, "Be yourself because everyone else is already taken." Did you ever hear that? That quote from him? I know. Because you know what? If we were all the same, if we were all Matt, which Matt's wonderful, but if we were all Matt. Um, you're going to go in the corner like this now, be no, negative. No, 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 no. Here, go do this. Well, okay. And you'll be posture, kind. Remember. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. okay. Right. Or if we were all one person, life wouldn't be as fascinating and um, unpredictable as it is. So, um, the, you know, the best way to do intelligent flirting is to not try to be someone that you aren't. Find out what you're the best at and accentuate that and you'll be fine. And we all hit bumps in the road and wrinkles in our life and fall down and it hurts, right? But what do you do? You get back up, right? Okay, so be yourself because everybody else is already taken. You're great just the way you are. Well, that does it here for us on uh, Late Night. A big thank you to Alice Holland for stopping by. It was, you, were, you were great. Oh, thank you. You gave a lot of good information. Oh, and stuff. great. Um, and also thank you to the studio audience and to Qthon. Um, they sponsored tonight's episode. It's the Quinnipiac's third annual dance marathon and we want you to check out its Do It For The Kids event which is this upcoming Tuesday, February 11th, 3 to 7 p.m. right here in the Piazza. And you can register a dance marathon team to benefit the Connecticut Children's Medical Center and join in its photo campaign to show your support for the Children's Miracle Network. So check that out and uh, we'll be back in two weeks. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, uh, late night uh, underscore Keb C. So do that right now on your smartphones and tablets. <laughs> it, it, all, it all comes full circle. So uh, we'll be right back. We'll be back in two weeks. So uh, have a nice night, guys. <laughs>